Hi, my name is Shelley Nolan and the purpose of this video is to show my understanding of clinical skills including chest auscultation, measuring a pulse and a respiratory rate, palpating and auscultating a blood pressure and performing a Glasgow Coma Scale as well as showing my communication skills both verbal and non-verbal with an elderly patient. This video was created on Thursday the 9th of May. I will first undertake a Glasgow Coma Scale also known as a GCS. This scale assesses the patient's motor response, verbal response and their eye coordination out of a total of 15 potential points, where 15 is a score of a healthy person and the lower the score, the worse their condition. Jones, is it okay if I ask you a series of questions today? Yes, that's okay. And so are you aware of your full name? Yes. And what is that? Walter Jones. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Now, do you know what day it is today? Yes, it's Thursday. Thursday, that's right. And do you know what month we're in? Uh, May. May, okay. And do you know the season? Mm, autumn. Autumn, that's right. And do you know what year we're in, Mr Jones? 2013. That's right. And are you able to reach up and squeeze my fingers? Yeah, yes. thank you. You can release now. Thank you. As Mr. Jones was able to answer all of my questions, he was well orientated and knew who he was and the exact date, so Mr. Jones scored a 5 for verbal response. As Mr. Jones was able to reach up and squeeze my fingers when asked to, he received a 6 for motor response. As I was, when I was asking Mr. Jones the questions, his eyes were directed at me and had spontaneous closing and opening, Mr. Jones scored a 4 for eye response. His overall GCS score is 15 points. When measuring a pulse, you are feeling for rhythmical throbbing of the arteries as blood is propelled through them. Pulse is measured by beats per minute and is usually measured at the radial artery. A fast pulse may indicate infection or dehydration, whereas a slow pulse may indicate a strong, healthy heart. The respiratory rate is the number of breaths per minute. For a man of Mr. Jones's age, which is 78 years old, the normal respiratory rate should be between 12 to 20 breaths per minute. Mr. Jones, would it be okay if I take your pulse today? Yes. And have you had it taken before? I have. You have, so you know what's involved today? Yes. Okay. Do you know what your normal pulse is? Can you turn your arm over for me? No, I can't remember. No, that's okay. So I'm just going to put my two fingers on your radial pulse, and I time it for 30 seconds, and then I'm going to time it by two to find the rate per minute. And without uh, Mr. Jones's awareness, I'm also going to take his respiratory rate. It's easier to take this without informing the patient because when the patient is aware that you're observing their breathing, it tends to alter. So um, in the second 30 seconds, I will take his respiratory rate and then I'll report back. Okay. So Mr. Jones, I measured your pulse at 70 beats, which is within the normal limit, so that's all healthy. Sure. And Mr. Jones's respiratory rate is at 12 today, which is in the normal limits as well. Now I will palpate and oscillate a blood pressure. Blood pressure is the amount of force your blood exerts on the walls of your arteries as it passes through. It is measured as systolic blood pressure over diastolic blood pressure where systolic indicates the pressure in the arteries as the heart squeezes out blood during each beat, and diastolic is the pressure as the heart relaxes before the next beat. Mr. Jones, I'm now going to take your blood pressure. Are you happy for me to do that today? Yes. Yes, and have you had your blood pressure taken before? Yes. You have, okay. Are you aware of what your usual blood pressure is? No. No, that's okay. So I'm just going to put this around your arm if that's okay. Yes. Just around your bicep. 
Now, if you turn your arm over and if you just relax, just put this over here. Now, I'm going to pump this up in a moment. You're going to feel some um, tightness in your arm. If it does get too uncomfortable for you, just let me know and I'll release straight away. Okay? Okay. So now I'm going to palpate your blood pressure. So you pump it up over 150 and then you slowly release. And when you feel the beat back in his radial pulse, that is the systolic blood pressure. So Mr. Jones, your systolic blood pressure today was at 110, which is within the normal limit, so that's very good to hear. Now I'm going to occultate your blood pressure, which involves me putting the diaphragm of my stethoscope on your brachial artery, and I'm just going to find out your systolic and diastolic blood pressure this way. Okay. So it's just the same process. I'm going to pump it up again. You'll feel some tightness, and then I'll release. Okay? Just okay. relax your arm. That's it. So Mr. Jones, I got your um, systolic blood pressure at 110 on 70, which is within the healthy limits again. So thank you for letting me do that. And I'll just, you can relax your arm and I'll just... Okay, that's good. The three non-verbal communication techniques I utilised to further maintain rapport with Mr. Jones whilst I was taking his blood pressure involved speaking in a calm manner to relax the patient, wearing a uniform which displayed professionalism and ultimately proving my trust, and I spoke at a pace which was easily followed by Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, I'm now going to listen to your chest. Is that okay with you? Okay. I'm just going to be checking for coughing or wheezing sounds or crackles just to see if your everything's normal with your chest. Is that okay? Yes, that's, that's okay. okay. Okay, I'm going to get you to lean forward, if that's okay, and just swivel to that way. Okay. How's that? Yeah, that's perfect, thank you. Now I'm just going to put my stethoscope under your shirt, is that okay? Yes. Okay, and I'm going to put your, the stethoscope on all different parts of your back, just to listen to abnormal sounds. So if, you, if I can get you to just cough for me before I do that. <coughs> I'm taking a few deep breaths. Yeah, that's perfect. Now I'm just going to put my stethoscope under your shirt here. And just breathe normally for me. That's it, just breathe normally. So Mr. Jones, I didn't hear any abnormal sounds, no wheezing or crackling, which is a good sign. And Mr. Jones's left lungs equaled the same sounds as I heard on his right lungs, which is what we wanted to hear. The three non-verbal communication techniques I utilised whilst oscillating Mr. Jones's chest involved smiling at Mr. Jones to show that I was happy to help him and that I cared about his well-being. I was far enough away from Mr. Jones, which didn't jeopardise his personal space, and I nodded my head to show I was interested and listening to what he had to say. To conclude all my findings, Mr. Jones's blood pressure was an 110 over 70, which was within the normal limits for someone of his age. 
Mr Jones's respiratory rate, rate was 12 breaths per minute, which again is in, within the normal limits. Mr Jones's pulse was at 70, and when listening to his chest, his left lung equaled the same sounds as I heard in his right lung, where no abnormal sounds such as wheezing or crackling was heard. But further assessments may be necessary, as these figures can change quickly. Thank you for watching this video on clinical skills and communication within the assessment phase of a patient.